Hello programmers! Today I'm going to show you how you can make a deck of cards in Python. So it could be used as the foundation for doing a blackjack program or poker or war or bridge. So first we want to create a deck of cards. And I'm going to create the deck of cards as a list. So I'll start, start out with a variable named deck. And then I'm going to have each item in this list is going to be one of the individual cards, like an ace of clubs I could uh, represent like this. And I'm first going to do this kind of the, the slow way and then show you a cleaner way to do it or a faster way to do it. Let me pause the video while I type in all 52 cards. So I've got all of the cards starting with the ace and if I scroll over it's a pretty long line of code I'll get to the the king at the end of that line and I just copied and pasted that and changed the suit from clubs to hearts to spades to diamonds so that is one way I'm not saying it's the best way but that's one way probably the easiest way to get started with creating a deck of cards what about printing the deck of cards well I'm going to do a for loop for card in deck and then I'm going to print and if I just did this it would print one card per line and I'd have 52 lines of output so instead I'm going to say at the end of each print statement just print a single space in between each card and now if I run this then I'll see the output of my 52 cards, but they're still in order. They haven't been shuffled. So how would I shuffle these cards? I'm going to go ahead and shuffle them before I print them. Well, I'm going to do another for loop and I'm just going to pick a variable. And my technique for shuffling is to pick two cards from the deck and swap their places. So you can decide how many times you need to do that to make it be a, a good shuffle, but I'm going to pick the length of the deck and minus one. So if I think of what is the length of that deck variable, well, the length of the deck is 52 because there's 52 cards. You can access each of the individual cards with a, an index number like zero is the first card, our ace of clubs. And if we wanted to say, well, what's the last card? We don't want to do 52, we want to do 51. And that gives us the king of diamonds. So in here, I'm looping through and X is going to start out being zero and the last thing it'll be is uh, the length of the deck minus one. So let's give this a try. Um, so what do I do inside here? Well, I'm going to keep track of card one that I'm swapping is going to be deck X. And I could, for my second position, pick a random number. And if I'm going to use the random module, I need to import random which I, I've got that up there. And then I want a random int anywhere between zero and the length of the deck minus one. And I'm gonna say my card two is that randomly selected card from the deck. I'll use that random number to figure out what's my position in the deck. So I've got two cards, card one and card two. Now I wanna swap them. Well, I could say the card in X position is going to be instead of card one, which it used to be, now it's going to be card two. And in the deck, in our random position, that's going to get card one. So we each time through the loop, we're switching two of the cards and we're randomly picking what card we're going to swap that with. So if I run this as is, we should see a nice shuffled deck of cards print to the screen. So we can see that we used to start with the ace and end with the king. And now we're pretty much shuffled. Um, we happen to still end with the king. That's interesting. But we're all the rest of those other cards are getting moved around. I'm going to try one adjustment. So the range command actually will, I think it's the reason it's not swapping that last card is the range command will not go to the number in the parentheses here. So it's not going to 52. It goes to 51. Let me try that one more time just for a slightly better shuffle. And yeah, okay. So I'm happier with that shuffle. So now that we have that, um, how could we improve on this? First, I'm going to improve on initializing all those cards. So instead of typing out 52 different cards individually, let's see what else we could do. We could 
Oops. We could start with an empty list and have some for loops. And we want to go through the different suits. And we could say the suits are clubs and then hearts and spades and diamonds. So this is one way to do it. And then I'll show you the ranks. So I'll have a list. Let me pause it while I type in all uh, the ace through the king. So each time through the top four loop, we're gonna go through one and pick one of those different suits. And then the bottom four loop has got all of the cards ace through king. If we append those together with the plus sign to concatenate two strings, we'll have something like the ace of clubs and then the ace of hearts and the ace of spades. Uh, two of clubs, etc. So I'm just populating the deck this way to avoid typing out 52 cards individually. And then finally, I'm going to show you an even cooler way to specify the suits. So instead of typing in a C for clubs and a D for diamonds, I'm going to use the Unicode characters. Another way is you could, if you find a picture of a, a diamond and a heart and a spade and club online, you can copy and paste those into your code. But I just looked up the Unicode characters for the different suits. And I'm going to type those in. And it looks kind of weird here, but when we run it and we take a look at what that Unicode character looks like, then we're going to actually see, voila, we've got the different suits there. Cool. So now I'm going to stop there and let you work out the rest of the program on your own. But if you wanted to deal like the first hand of blackjack, you could say, okay, well, let's deal the first card in the deck and after you've shuffled it and then let me also deal the second card of the deck so something like this and you could expand on this to make any card game you want all right happy programming have a great day